Okay, this is the lab we are going to do today, and we will rewrite the review question here. This part. Rewrite this batch program using a uh, PowerShell. Last uh, Tuesday, uh, not last, this Tuesday, we demonstrated how to add a drone with PowerShell pop up menu. Uh, here now you see these things comes up. So, what's the problem when I change that uh, registry editor but it uh, didn't show up last time? The reason is this one open with must be notepad. Last time is a Visual Studio Code, then this uh, drawing with PowerShell disappeared. Once I changed this one to notepad, here you choose another application, choose notepad, always use this app to open. Then the pop up menu will show up, drawing with PowerShell. Also, the drawing with PowerShell 7 show up this is uh, done from the installation this one is added by me last time I got the solution from the links here so I provide the link for you add one with PowerShell admin this one I practice this one, demonstrate this one during the lecture. Now for this one, I think uh, one of these is here. How to set this one open with PowerShell by default. I solved with this one, missing from context menu. Here, you change it to open with Notepad, then that drawing with a PowerShell will pop up. Here, open with this uh, Notepad. Okay, now let's create a, create a folder to hold today's lab. Lab 04. I create an empty file. What's the name of this file? Viewer, let's say service viewer PS1. Let's see whether here are any requirements from this uh, program name. Here we didn't see any requirement on this uh, program name, so you may use uh, any name you want. But usually, please use a readable, meaningful name. Here, service viewer. Open with Visual Studio Code. Now, we need to show off input box and a message box. Right. So we can use these two uh, references, input box and a message box. Here, create a custom input box we have demonstrated during the lecture. So we can just copy this part. Can't we paste it here? Can't we save it? Now, what part do we need to change? The title, right? First is the form title. You need to be uh, set it uh, equals this one, a service viewer. The form title is this one. 
or caption uh, service viewer now we also have uh, OK button, uh, cancel button and uh, label noun for that label we need to uh, change the text please enter the name of the service in the space below and uh, the name of the service you want to uh, view in the space below Okay, now we have this uh, stuff. We can run it to see whether we can get this one. Right click, run with PowerShell 7. Now you see now there's some problem. It's, uh, it does not show up everything so we need to cancel it before we cancel it we can have a complete test for example let's say w32 time click ok now everything disappeared so to de debug it a good idea is open with uh, that IAC Porsche IAC so how do we adjust the location of this one. We need to put the text box box a little, little bit a little bit lower. So there's a label, there's a text box, and its position or location here. You know this is the horizontal coordinate this is the vertical coordinate so you may increase this number but please be careful totally the form size is 300 times 200 and this OK button is at this location so a good idea is run it and keep it here now you can have a rough idea about the layout of these uh, components this is the label, this is the text box and the two icons so it looks like we only need to uh, increase this number to let's say to uh, 80 and save it then you run it again Uh, now this uh, looks good, but you see this part is still disappeared. It does not drop, huh? drop back. So we want to know why it disappeared. You can check the size of this label here. The size of this label. This is the size of the label. Do we have any uh, properties to control the text or drop back? So let's open it with uh, PowerShell IC. Now for this uh, label here, I want to change label dot 
so you can see whether we can find a wrap back property right so there's a word scroll uh, word size maybe word size is nice you can choose word size equals true scroll down to see any related information here you see some text text align uh, we see text align and text we didn't see a text uh, drop right so we can choose what size oops for those students who are familiar with uh, c-sharp you should feel quite easy Okay, now we can debug it here. We, st we still didn't see uh, some part, but now you see it uh, dropped to the next line. Now if you move it like this, but its size is a uh, its width is fixed by our setting here. The size does not change automatically when we resize the window. If you want to that, that would be better. Okay, now we want to uh, enlarge its size. So we can change this one to 40. This is the height of the label. Okay, now it looks good. We can use this one now. You type, uh, let's say, service. Click OK. You get a service here. Now we complete the first uh, part. Display an input box to the user. The next one, the user enter a service name. Then get the service name from the input box and confirm it to the user with message box. So how do we do that? Once the user clicked OK, we're, we can start from this place, get the value. Here you see we get the value. And we can also show the message box from inside this if statement. So here is uh, how to show a message box. To show a message box, here load the assembly we already uh, added this stuff the assembly so we only scroll down to see how to show the message box here there is an ok return show this is a message box but we also want to uh, set some property of that message box here you see the message box right and configure these uh, buttons abort, retry, ignore, yes, no, cancel, how do we change these things? Exclamation mark here. So it looks like this one is what we want. Right? And that one is uh, this uh, these statements. We can copy it. You can see how to change these icons. Okay, now we come back. Control we paste here. System Windows Forms message box show no the message uh, text. The message text you need to be identical to this one. You want to view the service. You want to view the service with the name. Now we can use this uh, variable dollar x, and the title is confirmation.
Yeah, the button. Okay, cancel. And this icon, message box icon, is a warning. I can save it and run it again to have a look. Type the name. W search two time. Okay, now you com compare these two. Right? Confirmation you want to view the service. Here, okay, cancel. But here only one, okay. So we need to change change these button size. Just uh, use the OK. Use the OK button. Double say two time. Now you see there is only one OK. So this is what you what we want. Okay, looks nice. But we need to uh, get the result. So how do we get the result? We can use the result equals this one. Now, if the user click OK, do you think this result will equal to this system window forms dialog result OK? Right, we think so, right? We can have a try. And again, we need to. Uh, Use the if statements. This result dash equal. Now this uh, Windows form dialog result. Okay. This is the message box button. Do we have a message box result? Here's dialog result. This is dialog result. This is a Windows form message box. Do we have a message box result? We can Google that to confirm. Can you see? Let's copy the whole thing. We ask something like this: message box. Result. Here, message box result, and then we have cancel, no, none, okay, yes, something like this. And the example show returns a message box result value. How to do that? Here is the example. But this one is using, uh, okay, the C sharp. Main windows. Now we want to find the message box result here. Message box result, right? So we know there is a type like that, so we don't need to find more, we just put it here, result, oops, not here, we want to put it here, can you see, can we, result, the autocomplete does not show up, so type OK, to see whether it works or not. Okay, in this part means the user confirmed. Right? Once it's confirmed, what do we need to do? Here then, once the service exists, we show it in a grid view. So, how do we get a service? You scroll down to see uh, services, manage services. Here use a PowerShell script. I will show you how to uh, manage the services. We can use get command dash noun service. Then you see we have get service, new service, restart, resume, set, start, stop, suspend. 
So all the typical uh, task can be done with this command. So we can use get service. Get service. Now you see there's a name. Now if we don't sub sub supply the name to see what we have. We have so many services and you see the status. Stopped running. Stopped running. And go up to see this services currently running on my machine status name display name so you can uh, choose uh, any of this uh, name to have a look for example let's choose this uh, do i have w32 here here w32 time i have one here so i can use that one get service dash name now you see the service was listed here this is my w32 time right show up like this now how do we show it in a table this means we need to format our output so use get command dash verb format then you see we have format hex format volume format custom format list format table format white we don't have uh, show a tape like a table how about format table but this is uh, what it looks like a table right this, this is a table so if we use this uh, format stuff to format the output for example format uh, list to see what it looks like it looks like this this list format table right default is a format table now i want to see like this a grid view you know what's a grid view right this is a grid view so we get a hint from here grid view could we get a command grid view get command grid now we have a out grid view so maybe we can find an all related out command get command dash verb out you can see we have out default, out fire, out grid view, and so on. Out blender. So we can uh, send the information to these places file, host, printer, string. So here is grid view. Let's have a look. This grid view. Again, bring up that service. Now this time, I out grid view. Okay, this is what we want. But here, the title is uh, not what we want. When you check this title, this one just says is here. So how do we change the title? We need to get help about this command, right? Well, we just uh, see here. You see, there is a title parameter. So now, here you can change the title. My title. Okay, my title. Now we have all the components. It looks like we we can complete our program now. In this script, if this one equals OK, we know this X is the service. So we can show it here. We just use a get service dash name now this one is that x and out grid view dash title now that title says the service name is here I will save it and uh, 
Now I'm just trying to look. Type the name W set to time. Click OK. Con confirm. Click OK. Now we have problem. The problem it says here this one is not recognized. System Windows Forms message box result OK. No such thing. Invalid uh, operation. Type not found. So where is that message box result? This message box result, we don't know where the system, uh, the namespace contains this message box result. That way we try to find from this place. We can compare with this one. This result here, system windows forms dialog result. So, so if you have it as just res instead of result that it's not showing up. Res here, this res. Okay, never mind. I I see. My bad. Yeah, yeah. It uh, it says this one is not found. This type is not found. So because this type, I just guessed, uh, just follow this uh, pattern, I assume it will be like this, but uh, it cannot be found, which means the name is not right. We want to find uh, something like this. So here it under this place systems windows so it's under this namespace systems windows okay now let's have a try here systems windows without these forms message box result can you save it Now run it again. W set two time. Okay, the confirmation pops up. Click OK. Now everything looks good. This is done. Now you, uh, we may have see any warnings here when we run this program. The term true is not recognized as the name of a command list or function. So. Where is this line? Here, this alt size equals to show is line 28. I change it here. So now we see some true how to use it. We need a dollar to preset that uh, true. In mine, here's a label here. This true, you know, this true is uh, valid in, in C sharp, but not valid here in PowerShell. In PowerShell, we need a uh, Add a dollar sign. Then we will be able to get remove of this uh, warning. So we run it again. W three two time. Click OK. Click OK. Okay, everything's good. Now you check here. There is no uh, warning, but this one show up. W three two time. Why this one show up? Is this line? Here, this X, when it show up, you will see this one. So we may uh, comment out that part. Connect S, save it. So now we can try to run from this place. Run with PowerShell. So show up here. But this time, it what size you see it does not wrap back right the the label it what size itself to hold this sentence this what what do we this is not what we want we want to align with this text box so which means this uh true here what size 
is not what we want here, water size. So we want to find uh, whether it can be wrapped back. So we can comment out this uh, water size to see whether it's wrapped back automatically. Command S, save it. Now we run it again. Okay, it's wrapped back, right? This is it's wrapped back. So I cancel and run from this place here. Run with PowerShell 7. Okay, it's wrapped back. So that what size? It will change the size of the label to hold the, the string. W32 time. Okay, OK, confirmation. Okay, OK. Now that grid view didn't show up. So we still have a problem when we run directly from this place. Right? So how could we uh, hold that uh, grid view? Hold this grid view. You see when you run from here. We can use uh, other services. Let's see for other services. We see a list. Uh, get services. So let's use the Win RM. Win RM. Okay, okay. Make sure this uh, change automatically. Win RM. Click OK. Now you see the uh, blink of that grid view, then it disappeared. Right? If I want to hold it here like this. To hold it, how could I do that? If we run inside the PowerShell, it's fine. But if we run like this, then at the end, it it end quickly. Any ideas? We can uh, hold it here. Again, because this is our technology, so we need to. Uh, find online it's not like a uh, science you need to do some uh, experiments to find a result for the technology you can always ask uh, the creator but science is n is uh, the creator is nature okay let's ask uh, how to ask the question can say power share script from power share script disappear or it say without displaying a window as we don't it displayed that uh, console window right? maybe you can add something like this without this playing a window. Then you can go through here. You can use this way. PowerShell.exe dash window list hidden followed by your script. Again that one you can uh, open from command window or PowerShell window but if you don't want to see this one you can create a shortcut and that shortcut holds this one here I type PowerShell .exe I want to make sure this can be found Yeah, it can be found in the system path environment available. So PowerShell dash window style 
hidden now follow the my script my script is a uh, service of viewer dot ps1 now you uh, will not see that uh, console window right but again we still didn't solve that problem when we click ok click ok that grid will disappear we still didn't find a way how to hold that grid view can say uh, power share grid view form grid view disappear Actually, it's not disappear. It's just a uh, flash quickly. Let's say disappeared quickly. How to prevent from closing out of grid view? Right. We can try to find something here. Use a dash wait. So just wait. Don't uh, quit. We find the solution. Here dash wait. Okay, run, run it. Oops, uh, let's see a uh, wing OM. Okay, 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 okay. The wait does not wait me. Right? All grid will this wait does not work here. Prevents window partial from closing until the this window is closed. Is it available in this one? This pass through, it can say as a OK and a cancel button. We may find the help from online. Get help out grid view online. see this pass through, this weight. File 7. We can uh, pass multiple items through this out grid view. Window shortcut. Dash weight. Yeah, we use this uh, dash weight, right? Shall use dash weight to create a window shortcut to the out grid view window. And let's check these uh, explanations. Pass through. By default, does not generate any uh, output. So we can see an uh, example how to use this one. This wait is a surprise command prompt and prevents window partial from closing until this window is closed. By default, the command prompt returns when this uh, 
or create a view window opens in windows shortcut so we need to create a shortcut otherwise the appears only momentarily before PowerShell close okay we create a shortcut to help try this is a shortcut top click is opened now we are run this one with the PowerShell W three two time clear OK clear OK it still disappeared inside this shortcut we may uh, change these things here the target started in this place we can uh, use that command line to put it here. That command line we just uh, saw it here. Can we paste it there? Click OK. Let's have a look. Now this shortcut. Top click. It disappeared so fast. Right. Top grid disappeared so fast, nothing popped up. So, this one asked to uh, so, did I make any type of here? Here, Windows PowerShell dash Windows style. Okay, it automatically add the full pass of that PowerShell command. Uh, it just disappear if we run here. Open it, disappeared. So this is not the right way. And if we run with PowerShell from here, that weight does not work. Right. Okay, now you need to find the way how to uh, try by yourself, try to find. keep it uh, from disappearing oh, please uh, check it by find the solution by yourself even though it can be done from this uh, environment correctly and also done you can open a terminal window to run it it should also run uh, correctly. Right, run from this place. You dash uh, service viewer win rm click OK click OK now I have problem here unable to find this one, I still have a problem in my program. This one, System Windows Message Box Result. So maybe this is the reason that wait, wait does not work. So how do we 
find the right result. We can find from here and this dot get type. Then we can debug this program. You learn how to debug it. Talk breakpoint F9. It will stop here. This one is debug. Run selection. Run script. Win RM. Okay, you see the stop here. And show dpg here. Now in this debug manual, step over your or you press this keys F10. Now it's type is called dialog result, not this uh, message box result. So now we know it's a uh, type dialog box uh, dialog result. So we can. Uh, Stop the debug. Here is dialog result, so we can use this one. Control C, come here. Then comment out this one. And a toggle. The breakpoint. When I am okay, why is the previous time uh, that error didn't show up, and I also come to this place? This is quite weird. Okay, now it looks like a. Uh, it worked. We can try from here again. Wing IM. Click OK. OK, now it uh, show up here. Close it. Then we go back to run with PowerShell 7. Like this. Wing. I am okay. Now it wait here. It uh, does not disappear now. So this is uh, a problem of our program. Okay, this one is done. Now we come to these uh, review questions. Question one: Create a PowerShell script to view file content as a hex viewer. Name the script file as hex viewer.ps1. And the usage like this: hex viewer dash file name followed by the file name, and I show this in step three. In this step, code this script and show it works. As expected, exception handling. Show a warning if the file to be built not exist. Otherwise, show its uh, content. Show this uh, also in this uh, step. Because in this step, you need to code it and uh, debug it and run it. So for script, can I check this link about script. Here you can also see a pause PowerShell script, a format hex. So this hex view, maybe we can use this uh, format hex. Here, yeah, this format hex. For example, if I want to uh, show something in hex, for example, hello, we pipeline to format hex. Okay, it looks nice, right? Here is the hello, the ASCII code, and here is the 
PEX format and um, what does this 0, 0 mean and what does this number means? So this number means the column here, column 0, column 1, column 2 until column F. Totally we have 16 columns. Here this 0 means uh, the row 0. If we have more, we have row 0, 1, row 1, row 2, row 3 and so on. So this uh, looks nice. So we can use this uh, format hex. So which means how do we put this format hex into a script? Great, uh, that script. We open this uh, about script. Here about script. How do we write a PowerShell script? This about script is the execution uh, policy we have discussed last week. Now, let's see how do we uh, supply parameters. We supply parameters in the first line, use this prime and the prime name, something like this. So this looks uh, what we, we need, right? Then when you run it, you supply this parameter, computer name, with the computer's name, then show the result. So this looks good. Let's create the program. It's called hex view. New file hex view dot ps one. Again, I would like to uh, write it in this uh, ICE. The first line I need to copy this part. Oops. Paste here. Check the requirement. We need to supply a parameter called a file name. So we change this one to file name. And we say file name parameter is required. Now how do we test a file is it exist or not? Right? Show this step in show a warning if the file to be built not exist. So the warning, we can use the warning message box from here. So again, we need to add this uh, assembly uh, name, add these assemblies at the beginning of this file. Then we may show a message box if the file does not exist. Right? We can show a message box like this. So we can copy this line. Put it here. We will modify it later. So how do we test a file exists or not? So again, since it's called a test something, maybe there are some commands with the oops. I want to type something here. So we get command, let's say test. will be test. So we have so many tests. Now which one is used to test a file existing? Here we have test to check through test file catalog, test pass. So it looks like this is a test pass. Actually the quickest way you just ask Google.
PowerShell test file existing. So we get help on this uh, test pass. Determine whether all elements of a path exist. So this is quite powerful. Dash pass. Example test this uh, test the pass whether it exists or not. Test the po uh, pass or profile. Check whether there are any files besides a specified type. Right, it's quite powerful. Check for a file, that's pass, pass tab, leaf. So this is how to check for a file. Okay, now we can use that one, but before that, a good idea, you can always test the first, whether it work or not, in your command window. Here, for example, I want to test this file, whether it exists or not. We can use test pass dash pass dot open stack now type. It called a uh, pass type leaf. You say it's true. Without this pass uh, leaf, it's still true. It's fine. But maybe we have a, a full. Oops. So it's better use this uh, pass type leaf together, as the example showed. You can read the document. Okay, how do we get the parameter? Right? We didn't see how to get that. Uh, all the parameter is, is can, we can show it like this file name. Okay, we have this file name. Now we can use this test pass. Always uh, add some comments here. File name parameter is required. Now, next, test file name exists. So we use test pass. File name, pass type, leaf. We, we want to get the result. So use a result. Now, if the result is true, it exists. If it's uh, false, so we can say if this result equals false. Now, again, we need a dollar sign false. Okay, this uh, part. We show a uh, warning, so show now this time we say file name not exist and here the title warning. Okay, I think it looks good. Now, after you show a warning, we need to quit this uh, shell script, right? How do we exit a shell script and return uh, exit code as we did in batch programming? Now, this time we ask Google. PowerShell. Exit with code. With the exit code. 
with an arrow code or any code or status code. Usually we need to check several uh, sources. Here you just use this exit. So we want to find the PowerShell exit. PowerShell is this, uh, here is the design uh, function. Still use this uh, exit. What's the PowerShell exit? Okay, we didn't see those uh, things. How about we get alias exit? Nope, exit uh, does not exist. So get command exit. We have exit ps session, exit ps host process. So maybe it's this one, PS session. So we get help. Oops. Exit PS session. And the interactive session with a remote computer. No, this is not what we want. We run it locally, not remotely. Here you can also use the uh, exit keywords. So it, this exit is a uh, is okay. It's a keyword of PowerShell as uh, stated here. So now we can use this exit as a, since it's a keyword. It's uh, still a uh, PowerShell because it's a keyword of PowerShell. So we can. Use exit. Now we want to exit some error message. Usually, error stuff, uh, error code is more than one or more than zero. We know zero is means success, right? So just exit one. Otherwise, here again, you can see a sh comment show a warning if are not exist. Then here, file exist. It exists. Then we show with the uh, format hex. Right? We show with the format hex. Could we put it into a, a grid wheel? Actually, grid wheel it uh, show. The content is uh, like a table, so but this uh, format, the hex format, is not like a table. Even though it can be done, it will need needs lots of work. For example, you convert each column of that hex wheel as a column inside the grid wheel table. So let's uh, use the simplified stuff. So we need to get the content of the file first, right? Get content. Oh, this uh, file. Then pipeline its content to the format hex. So for this program, we run it interactively. So let's uh, test here. I didn't supply uh, because the parameter is required. So let's. Uh, Run from this place. You can check the requirement here. Hex wheel. Dash file name. No. It we cannot run it like this. Hex will dash file name 
and supply something. But before that, you may just uh, run it to see what happened. So a parameter is required. Dash file name. Now, which file do you want? Let's just supply itself. Press enter. File parameter is uh, is required. File name. And what is supplied is this one. But it is still uh, throw out this thing. File name equals this one. Now, how do we uh, verify the parameter? What does this mean? It throws uh, an exception. Right? It throws this exception. No matter it exists or not, it just throws the exception. This is not what we want. But if we want to require, a, since we want to process inside our script, so we can just uh, get rid of this part. So get rid of this thing. It looks like this throw, no matter what, it will throw out this exception. For those joints who know uh, C sharp, you know you use a try catch to catch those uh, exceptions. You can also use a throw to throw your custom exceptions. All right, now we're going to again. Pass cannot bind argument to a parameter pass because it's a uh, null. It's fine. We, I, we didn't self pass because it's a uh, null. So we want to get content, but it says it's a uh, pass is a null. We already supplied this one. So the problem it happened here. Cannot ban argument to parameter pass. Okay, this uh, get content command we cannot use like this. We need to specify a parameter. That's why I always need to check the document if you don't have good good memory like me. Dash pass. Do we have a dash pass? P. No. So we we'll find the get content. PowerShell. Well, we need to get an atom content, right? Maybe we, we use a run command. Get contents of the atom at a specified location. Okay, it's a good. We have a pass, dash pass for that string. Here, for example, if we want to find the add content, so we need a pass like that. But when I try to write here, the autocomplete does not show up. Get content dash pass I wonder why it does not show up get a content dash pass ok we run it again because the pass is null so it looks like maybe with a better uh, this file name we already uh, supplied our file name test pass is good because we see it exists because this does not show up right this uh, alert box does not show up but this is get content, so what's the problem here?
let's draw it line by line. We use debug to have a look. But uh, here, if we want to draw it line by line, let's see where we could supply parameters. You know in Visual Studio, you know where to set the parameter to debug your program. But here, I, will, I want to find out where I could set up the command parameter for this script. I didn't see it. Debug, I didn't see it here. Start intelligence. What's that one? Intelligence of work complete. So in this case, how do we uh, show the result? We can just uh, use file name and show it here. This is get content of a text file. We use this get content dash pass and so on. We can try it inside this place. Get content dash pass hex view Then we are format hex. Before we add for format, this works, right? If we add a format hex, it also worked, right? You see all the system stuff. This thing looks quite nice as a hex wheel. But now the problem here we want to uh, why this uh, line does not work. In this place, I use this one get content dash pass followed by file name. Exactly this thing format hex and it will work, but why inside this place it does not work. Let's try hex build file name with some uh, non-existent stuff. It also comes through this place. This part does not work. Show a risk here. As we just uh, test it in the interactive uh, window, it worked, but why it does not work here? So we need to test again. It still jump to this line. Wait a minute, where I run from here. Prime is not recognized a name of command, so the problem happening from here. From this place, then it will not take it as a primate. So this is a problem. When we check this uh, prime, it will uh, draw it like this. Then this one it worked. So why my situation it does not work? Let's primary supply like that. Then we get to like a 
that is another reason maybe we need to put this line as the first line Okay, now it worked. The problem is this primate we need to put at the first line. Hello, not exist. Okay, okay. exit. So this uh, exception is tested. It worked. Now we want to uh, use itself hexavio.ps. You see that it's uh, showed as a uh, hex numbers. Can I see all these things here? Show from here. Offset bytes. Ask code. The red panel shows the ask code. This left panel shows the offset. The mid panel shows the content in hex numbers. Okay, we get this worked. So this usage showing step three. We showed it. Exception handling, we already show it. If uh, none exist file, we supply it. We will see that warning dialog box, message box. Uh, now we come to a uh, task two. Create a simple PowerShell script using this uh, archive to back up Windows events about security and test it uh, works. Okay, we create a script. What good name to name this file? Let's create backup as we did before. PS1. Okay, put a backup here to edit. Now, this backup, we can follow the backup here. This is the event we need. You can also create the file name. So let's copy everything here. Control C. Come back here. We put it as a comment. So for block comment, the syntax is like this. Now for the directory, we can say back DRR equals. Now this time, we need to save it into a our lab zero four. So we create a folder called backup. here we have a backup uh, DR I'm uh, sorry about this backup DR now we need to uh, go to this uh, DR with PowerShell. PowerShell is a set location, right? Set location. Now for this set location, pass back DR. Use this CD to this uh, back DR. So this is the way in PowerShell. Now we need to generate the file name. How do we generate a file name? Backup, date, and a time. So in PowerShell, if we just uh, get date, what do we get? Get date. This cannot be used as a file name. 
So could be a format. Change the format. Get help on get date uh, with online. Now we want to specify the format. Here, scroll down to see any place we can date time format. There is format. It will looks like this. How could we uh, here specify the format? Okay, this format looks good, right? We only need a uh, if you want your script work for a long time, you may need this year. Here we just need the month date hour, maybe also a minute. So we can try it here. Get date dash format. Now inside this place we only use month date hour and a minute like this then you will see something like this this is a uh, legal for file name so we can use this to create the file name right use this one to create the file name so we can call the file name or the backup file name this k file equals this one but here we can uh, make it more uh, clear add a prefix called backup then concatenate with the result now how do we concatenate uh, with the result use a dollar sign like this now the archive what's the uh, extension in batch we use uh, we use 7z for the compression now on Windows has this requirement. You are asked to use this uh, archive PowerShell utility. So this archive help compress archive, expands archive. We use this uh, compress archive, archive, path destination, compression level, and so on. Check the example here. Is a zip file, so we use a zip dot zip. We may uh, check this one first in a command line to see whether it works or not. You can put it here, right? You paste it here and run it. Then you show that. Uh, BCK file. So this BCK file name looks good. Okay, we con constructed the file name. Now we do the compression. Here, do the compression with this uh, example. We can write something like this. So this looks good. So we can follow this example. Compress equals. So what this thing we will learn next week. For those students, learn the. Uh, C sharp. I think you are familiar with some notation. Now, for the files, we are want to compare it here. 
those file name contains the word security. So I put it here. So there is a pass and a compression level. Compression level. So please pay attention whether I have any typo, otherwise we will spend time to debug these things. Destination pass. To avoid a typo, you just copy this one. Control V. And uh, change this file name to ours. Here we already have that uh, file name. Right? That file name is that BCK file. Okay, now we have this uh, backup.ps1. We need to run it to check whether it works or not. At the end, we need to compress. Okay. So you see, this is a way to specify several parameters together. We can also specify them separately, but this one you see we can specify them together like this. And this is a called array, and we will learn uh, next week. So we coded this one, then we need to test it first. We just run the program, the name called backup. Oops, what's the name? Get child items. So the name is called backup.ps1. We have arrows. The process cannot access the file here because it's being used by another process. So we have this problem. Now that's why in our Bare batch program. We copy it uh, first. Uh, we copy it to this uh, location first. After our okay, we delete those uh, files. So if we use a uh, copy items to see copy item dash pass, we copy everything from that target place here copy this one ctrl c and paste here the destination destination let's put it in that backup folder Oops, I work inside this backup folder. So this is not what. In this backup folder, what things I put here? Nothing. So I need to uh, go up one level. Then we use a copy item. Specify the source. Then specify the destination. Okay, and you see it worked. No error show up. We can also use DLR short command backup. We know DLR is an alias here. Okay, everything is here. Now we can modify our program. Like this, first we need to copy to the backup folder. So we use copy item dash pass is this one. Oops, we need that quote and uh, the destination. Since we already CD into, oops, maybe this is a problem. I CD into this backup. 
destination uh, is the backup. Backup folder. So we copy all those uh, events with security inside their names to this folder. Then we can or carry all those copied files back up. Actually, here you can just uh, use uh, store. After that, we'd better delete the uh, delete all those uh, event files. Here, when you check the result here, you see all the event files are copied here, and their extension is evtx. So we can uh, delete all those evtx files after we compiled. Now we uh, here this backup file. Where do we save it? We also need to save it in the backup folder. So if we want to save it in the backup folder, we need to uh, supply it here destination path. Backup. Okay, then we can remove atoms. Remove atom dash pass. Now what do we are going to remove? We are going to remove uh, everything under this backup folder. All those uh, EVT files, EVTX. Make sure they're right the EVTX files. Control S, save it. Now we uh, run it again with this uh, backup.ps1. Before that, I delete all these things. Control A. Delete them. You can have a look what happened here when I run this uh, command. This you need to demonstrate it works. Right, it worked. It copied the file to this place, archive, then delete. Okay, this is a program. Or with uh, parse, uh, partial script. The next one, the last one, the last one, use scheduled task to do these things. We have done this one. Scheduled tasks. So with power share, you can see. Enable schedule task, export schedule task, disable, get, new. So create means new. Start, stop. So we need this new first. This new schedule task. Right? You can specify the action, description, principle, settings, trigger, and so on. It's similar to that. Uh, batch shell script command. So we can use uh, something like this, or you can put them in a single command line. Uh, just this example. Here we use this example. New schedule task action execute file. So let's uh,
For this task, you may do it just inside this command window. You are encouraged to write a script to do this uh, part. So again, I want to open that uh, task schedule so you can see the result vividly after we create one. Oops, now how do I arrange these things? First, the action equals new new scheduled task action execute now we want to execute our script backup dot ps1 this is a action T the trigger new scheduled task trigger it says add logon but we want to trigger it uh, every minute right so we need to find the explanation about how about every no minute no so we need to check the document every minute as job principal settings so this trigger see these triggers trigger select one time radio button daily weekly monthly and start up and log on and so on but if I want to do it uh, now, you see the content uh, document is incomplete. Right? We want to find select on time, daily, weekly. So we choose once, just uh, out buffer. This new trick, I don't know how to specify trick it every minute here. Because we didn't find uh, how to specify it here. But let's compare this part. Here when we create one, this example the trick is uh, at this trigger is add logon. Add logon. You s scroll down here. I'll check this trigger. Add logon. Add start on add or on event. So maybe we just combine these two words together on a schedule. These three words on a schedule. No, they're all complete. Does not work. If I choose add logon. I have it, but uh, when I want to try on a schedule, once no, don't want to once. Schedule. So this is uh, quite tedious. So we want to find find it, but uh, this is a new trigger. We didn't find the explanation here. New schedule task trigger at that time. Repeat, repeat interval. So we use at. Now we find it. Find here. Once at this time, we want to repeat here daily at this time. There's interval. 
weekly. Okay, where could I find a yeah, start a daily days interval? So certainly it would be daily, right? But daily every day, every minute, here's a repeat, repeat interval. So we need a repeat. I think this one you may uh, do it by yourself. So you just need to create the task name. This is my daily routine runs the simple partial script daily. To test, you need to run uh, every minute and verify the trick as expected, then delete the scheduled task. Reputation, duration, how do I specify the time unit? I need to find the repeat. Daily days, interval days a week, once. Reputation, duration, how long for this one, and interval. Control F, minute. I didn't see a minute, hour. I didn't see hour. So how do we specify this uh, unit? We use a uh, time span. Now time span. Again, we need to uh, search this uh, time span. For those students who are familiar with this time span type from C Shop, you will know how to specify this one. So we can uh, go with partial time span. Time span minutes. Here, new time span. Specify days, hours, minutes, seconds. Here, new time span, hours, minutes. So we only need to specify a time span with minutes. So we specify the time span first. Yes. New time span, dash minutes, every minute. Now we can create that uh, trigger. Here, the trigger is here. Scheduled task trigger and uh, reputation duration is this uh, time span. Reputation interval. So, duration and interval. What's the difference between these two? Reputation to duration, reputation uh, interval. Again, we need to uh, find the explanation. Repeat task every. Hope this is uh, not about that one.
here we check the repeat there's interval here repetition duration repetition interval so we can go down to find the explanation about this tool repetition duration specify how long the repetition pattern repeats after the task starts and repetition interval between each restart of the task the amount of time between each restart of the task so we don't need to care about this so we only use this repetition duration We still, this trigger, we still need some parameters here. So which uh, one I need to supply? We go through here. With this syntax. Position one, so I don't know which one I still need to specify. Okay, I think uh, just follow the way you need to find uh, the solution by yourself and uh, demonstrate this result because uh, time is up. <laughs>